Welcome back for the final night of the 11 Nights of Halloween. I want you to meet somebody. My twin brother. Handsome devil, isn't he? Looks just like me. Being twins is kind of neat. You get to share clothes. You get to dress exactly the same. You can swap girlfriends without them knowing. Granted, he's a little bit skinnier than I am. Maybe even a little bit shorter. But nobody ever caught on. But as you'll hear in tonight's story, being a twin isn't always fun. Enjoy. I have an identical twin brother. Completely the same appearance, right down to the smile lines on our faces. But personality-wise, we are polar opposites. He lives with me, and while I go to work every day, he stays at home and does absolutely nothing. I'll come home after a 14-hour shift, and he'll just be hanging around. I never see him go anywhere, unless you count him following me from room to room like a lost dog desperate for attention. I'll tell him about my day, but he never adds anything to the conversation. Say what you will about homebodies having the ideal life of leisure, but I'm telling you right now that boredom and isolation can drive you completely mad. I honestly believe that's what happened with him. It started very slowly, so I can't tell you exactly when something inside his head disconnected, but I can tell you the very first time I noticed that something was terribly wrong with him. I had come home from work at the same time as I usually do, and after putting my laptop bag down and turning around, he was standing there right in front of me, mere inches from my face. I saw a bead of sweat rolling down from his temple and a slight twitch underneath his eye. I'll never forget the way he stared at me with that look on his face. You know the one. That look of not looking at someone, but rather staring right through them, as if they wanted desperately to tell you something to share something dark and deeply personal, but the first word that needed to escape from their mouth to even begin to say it was trapped inside and resting on their tongue. I glanced down at some bruising on his knuckles. He raised his hand and brushed his blonde hair away from his face, and I could see an abrasion that wrapped around his palm, like something had been cutting off the circulation for a long while. His other hand showed similar markings. How did you hurt your hand? I asked. He didn't respond. I didn't mention the mark on his hand again until about a week or so later, when I came home from work and I again saw the same bruising and abrasion lines on his hands. Were you out somewhere while I was gone? I asked. The twitching under his eye had spread down his face to the corner of his mouth, giving him almost a snarling look. He didn't reply just stared vacantly through me as if I wasn't there. I called in to work the next day so I could keep an eye on him. I followed my same routine of shaving, showering, having breakfast, and packing my things for work, just before saying goodbye to him and driving just far enough down the road that the house was still visible from my car. I sat there for hours just watching the house to see if he'd emerge. When he didn't, I drove back to the house and parked. I went inside pretending to have forgotten something, and there he was, in the same spot I last saw him when I left several hours earlier. I went back to my car and sat there until my usual end of work time. Then I went back home, walked past my twin without saying a word, turned the TV on in my room, uh, no and passed out. More about gel coat. When the fourth round was... I was awakened by a news report blaring on the TV set. Something about a series of prostitute murders, all done via ligature strangulation, and all done less than a mile from my house. My twin was a killer. I knew he did it. What if someone saw him? What if they thought he was me? After all, he never seemed to leave the house. I took my pistol from my nightstand, 
crept downstairs where he was sitting and said goodbye before firing ten shots and breaking every mirror in the house. I haven't seen him since. <laughs>